Hi everybody, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today I have a fun collaboration with the Colorado Arts Collaboration Group and that is Pam Tonino, Shami Dixon, and Ina Salisbury. And you'll find the links to their videos in my description box or in the iCards. We get together regularly and this uh, challenge we decided that we would take a functional kitchen item and transform it. The rules were really pretty simple. Um, we were to use some fabric, some metal, and um, a kitchen item. And um, so we were all to take that and it'll be a surprise what each one, one of us came up with. Let's get started. The materials for this um, project are this little cute little teapot that I got at the thrift store. It was $1.99, but it's on sale 50% off, so it was really a dollar. And um, some um, lace here, so that's my fabric piece. A couple of other kinds of uh, ribbons and uh, some scrapbook paper, some metal components, and I'll see what I want to use of these little pieces and bits that I got. Some Mod Podge and some paint. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is clean the teapot. This has been sitting on a shelf for a while. So I'll clean it with some alcohol. Just make sure it's good and ready. And then I'm going to take the scrapbook paper, which is a really pretty, pretty vintage rose paper. And you can see I'm just jagged tearing this, um, so I get lots of little strips. And I'm using some Mod Podge to apply that to the ceramic teapot. Um, <clears throat> I'm being pretty liberal with the Mod Podge. I'll get it down, and this has a really steep curve, so I'm putting a lot of Mod Podge, and it'll actually moisten that paper and allow it to fit a little bit better. And then I'm taking my fingers and smoothing it out as best I can and making sure it's curving and, and um, adhering to the surface. And then I'll pull off any excess and just keep adding the scrapbook pages. I am gonna have wrinkles and there's overlap here, but I'm looking for a sort of grungy vintage look. Um, I've gone around the edge and I've just seen where I missed any pieces and I'm just filling those in with a little bit of extra scrapbook paper. And it's as simple as that to get the basic piece ready. Now, as I went through this, there are, um, I, I didn't uh, worry too much about the tops or the bottom and I uh, thought I could clean that up after the fact. So you notice I just uh, ripped off the paper and now I'm taking my craft blade and I'm just going around the edge of the top of this teapot and that makes it really easy because it gives me a, um, a surface to rest my knife against and I'm getting a really clean cut. So I really like that. And I'll just take off all that extra paper around the top and then I'll do the exact same thing around the bottom. Now this is a ceramic teapot, so the bottom is really kind of rough there. You can see that gray um, <clears throat> edge. So what I'm gonna do after I'm all done with this is I will take some felt dots and put a little protection there uh, so when it rests on the table, it's not scratchy. So I've cleaned that up and that looks pretty good. And now I have this, um, I have this ribbon, so I'm just getting pieces uh, from my stash, so I, I didn't necessarily want to buy anything new, and I wanted to have that rose color. So I've got this grow grain ribbon in this tan shade, and I'm going to take some rose colored acrylic paint, just kind of wet it down so I have a wash, and I'll just change the color of that ribbon, and I'll let that dry. And now I have these fun little buckles. I've had these forever, so I'm glad to have an opportunity to use them, and I'll just thread them on the ribbon. And I'm going, to, I'm going to end up using four of these, so I'll get all four threaded. And they're going to make a nice decorative element to the teapot. And then once I get them all put on the ribbon, I can start to place them. I'm going to actually use these on the handle. So I'm just going to sort of place them. I'm using Sobo glue here and I'll get the basic, uh, get the ribbon started there and just get the buckles positioned and spaced out the way I want them spaced out. So I'll use two of the buckles on the top and then two on the side of that, the edge of that handle. There, there you go. And then I'll just keep laying down the glue and positioning the ribbon and the buckles. because so I can already see it kind of taping, taking shape there. I'm 
Let's get those moved up. Get some extra glue on there. It was kind of fun just looking for most of the materials that um, I got are just things I had already in my stash, except I did buy the teapot. And then I got a, uh, the, some of the lace from, um, from Pam Tonino. So you can see I actually made a mistake in the filming here. And so I've got this swag ribbon that I got from Pam. And <clears throat> I went ahead and put that all around the outside. And then I had this other little ribbon in my stash and I used that for the top. It happened to be that the colors really worked well. So I just used the Sobo to put that around. And then I had this white lace uh, from my stash that I thought was really pretty and would give a nice contrast. And I'm using a little metal knitting needle to apply a strip of glue right under that swag. And then I'm just using the needle portion to push the lace up so that it's really tight against the swag. Now, one thing about this lace, it doesn't have any gathers to it. It's a straight lace. And because this teapot is curved, I actually had to make um, a little bit of um, a gathering. And you'll see that I'm just right here, just using my knitting needle to push that in so that I can gather and that one edge there of lace will, will lay a little bit flatter against the, against the teapot. So I just keep laying down thin bits of glue and getting the, um, the lace butted up against that swag. And it's actually working really well using this little knitting needle. It's one of those double-ended knitting needles. I don't actually knit, but you know, I got all kinds of stuff I use for tools. So I'll just keep pushing that lace, making my little gather so it'll lay a little flatter. That Sobo glue that I use really works well. Um, it, it's really thick, so I can't actually get it to pour out of the little spout at the top. I have to put it in a little cup and then just use some kind of applicator, either my fingers or in this case the knitting needle or something like that. But it's really a great adhesive and I really like it. It dries really clear. So I'll just keep pushing that in there and positioning it. Cut off the excess and do my last little bit of gluing at the top. Now I could, um, I could just leave this lace hang as it is, but I think I'm actually gonna use a little bit of glue, extra glue, and just do a thin, thin coat so it's adhered. And I'm not putting a whole lot, just a little bit, and sort of get, making sure that it stays down. I just think it looks a little bit neater to do that, but you could leave it any way that you liked it. If you like the little ruffle effect, that's nice too. So just add a little bit of that glue, get that tacked down all the way around. I really think this is coming together well. It has a nice vintage look to it. I don't do a lot of projects like this, so it's really fun to challenge myself when I get together with um, Shami and Ina and Pam and we do these kinds of projects. So I'm really enjoying um, just, just stretching a little bit and trying different materials and how they come together. So I'll just go ahead and finish up tacking that lace down. And there it's, it's all done. It's looking pretty good. <clears throat> There's the little teapot top. I collage that as well. And now I've got this. This is really a plastic pearl type trim. And I'm just using, doing the same thing, taking the glue. This is the Sobo glue again. And uh, putting it on with my knitting needle and then just pressing in the pearl trim. It's full pearl trim. This is actually plastic, I think. And it'll just give it a nice little extra element and a little bit of texture around the bottom. And I'll just keep uh, moving that off. I kind of thought it was going a little bit slow using the, the needle tool, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my finger to get that in. 
and just make a little bit faster work of getting that adhered. And just fit that in a little bit. There you go. So I've got most of the main elements um, that I wanted to add added, but that piece at the top there where I added the swag and then a little bit of um, ribbon is just ugly. So I've got this really pretty uh, paper rose that I used in another project and um, it matches beautifully. So I'm using the glue and I'll just glue that on and hold that for just a teeny little bit to get that stuck on there. And I think that looks great. Looks really nice. The last element that I'm going to add is a little polymer clay button that I made. And um, this, these buttons are really easy to make and at some point I'll do a little tutorial on these. But you can see it's just a little textured button and it's got that rose paint on it to keep everything cohesive. And I'm going to use it to cover up the inside of that handle where the lace, white lace piece is met. Just apply a little bit of glue to that. And get that adhered. And you can see it'll just peek out of the handle. I think it turned out really cute. This was such a fun project, uh, transforming this little teapot from the thrift store. It's really fun to take these elements that you see um, that are, you know, someone else didn't want them, and um, you can repurpose them and turn them into a really pretty piece of art. So I think it turned out great, and I really appreciate it. I hope you check out the video links below to Ina and Pam and Shamise channels. As always, thanks for joining me. Hope you consider subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, leaving me a comment. I really enjoy hearing from you. Thanks for joining me in my studio. Take care.